Hey everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cine Fashions, where we talk all things media. So I am here today with another Blu-ray review of a brand new release. This is Project Elf, a made-for-TV movie from 1996 that is essentially the end of the Elf story. So when I talked about this one on my anticipated releases video, I noted that it was being released by Liberation Hall, and at the time I thought I'd never even heard of them before. But it turns out Liberation Hall is actually the company behind the somewhat infamous RoboCop TV series release that took the aspect ratio from the original 1.33 to 1 and turned it into a widescreen aspect ratio. I remember when that released, there was a lot of talk around that and how a lot of people just hated that release because of that. Well, unfortunately, it looks like Liberation Hall has not yet learned the lesson to not change the aspect ratio because we once again have a made for this is a made for TV movie. So from 96, so it was a 1.33 to 1 original aspect ratio and it was turned into 1.78 to 1 on this Blu ray release to give it a widescreen look to fill our new 4K and HD TVs. But does that ruin this Blu ray release and is it still worth picking up? That's what I'll talk about today. So before we get into this, if you have a quick second, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right into my Blu-ray review from Liberation Hall. This is Project Elf from 1996. All right, so doing a super quick unboxing of this because it's there's not much to talk about. We have our cover art here and then the back of it, which talks about the special features and the aspect ratio. If we open it up, we see nothing on the inside other than the disc, which does have some cover art on it, which is really cool. I guess it's not cover art. It's just artwork on the disc. But that is about it for the packaging on this one, for the physical packaging on this. So it gets the job done. It looks totally fine. Nothing else to talk about there. So let's start off by talking about the movie itself. So like I said, this is a made-for-TV movie from 1996. It's directed by Dick Lowry. So this actually comes at the end of the ELF storyline. There is the original series, and then there are the two animated series, and then finally, there is Project ELF. Maybe there's more, but that's what I know of to be like the ALF canon, if you will. So we are following ALF. He is actually spending time on the Edmonds Air Force Base, where the Alien Task Force has him locked away in essentially a prison while they're trying to figure out what to do with him. He, the One of the main antagonists in this movie is played by Martin Sheen, and his character essentially wants to murder ALF. He wants to get rid of him because he's tired of playing essentially babysitter for him. And so he comes up with this idea to get rid of him. But on the other side, our, our protagonists in this, William O'Leary and Jensen Daggett, they are our two protagonists in this. And of course, along with Alf, our, our main, main character. But they catch wind that this is about to happen, that he is trying to murder Alf. And so they rescue him from this base. But Alf isn't really all about it. He likes his life there because he is this like bookie, essentially, and, and lives it up in prison. And so he is not all on board with being quote unquote rescued. And from there, it's basically them trying to save Alf, Alf kind of throwing wrenches into the plan to screw things up and uh, Martin Sheen's character trying to catch them. And then there is a, I'll call him a fifth main character that gets introduced later on and he plays a big role in this as well. So that's what we're following here. That's the story of Project Alf. It's kind of ridiculous ridiculous, but it works surprisingly well. This is a shockingly funny movie for a made-for-TV movie from 1996. On top of that, it is surprising how far this movie goes in terms of some of the jokes in this, but I was laughing out loud way more than I anticipated I would. I'm a bit curious about the don't ask, don't tell policy here in the military. What about it? Well, I assume it's worked to your advantage. Stop the tape. 
That said, this is not a perfect film by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, it is funny, but like it's funny in almost an awkward sort of way. Alf has all these like seemingly one liners and there's these weird pauses before and after them. I don't know why that's in there, but it does make for a little bit of like a jilted experience. But I was still laughing, so clearly it worked pretty well anyway. On top of that, I thought the acting in this was really well done. Martin Sheen is Martin Sheen. Of course, he's fantastic. But then you get O'Leary and Daggett in this, which actually were a couple in Home Improvement. They used to play the brother of Tim Allen and Tim Allen's uh, sister-in-law. And they played a big role in Home Improvement, which is another series I absolutely love and still do to this day. So it was really cool seeing those two kind of reunited again for this movie. I thought that That was a lot of fun. And then finally, there's Miguel Furrer. He plays this like old NASA scientist who was maybe kicked out, maybe left because they wouldn't let him tell the truth. We're not really sure. They kind of talk about that as the movie goes on. But what's really cool, I think he was, he acted his role totally fine. I thought he was good. But what's really cool about that is just like the 90s tech that he introduces to the movie. There is this robot that is hilarious. He has so much attitude for just being this kind of stupid, uh, stupid servant robot who brings you drinks and things like that, but I thought he was hysterical. May I offer you a refreshment? No. No thanks. Waste a trip. I was shocked at some of the adult humor that was in this. First off, it's a family film, yet Alf visits a strip club. It's called like the Kitty Cat Lounge or something, and so obviously Alf loves to eat cats, and so he thinks he's going to a restaurant that serves cats for dinner, and it is hilarious. They don't spend a lot of time there, but there is some women in bikinis, I guess, which like, again, it's made for TV and it's a family movie. Only the 90s. It's interesting because the only real bonus feature on this is a commentary track. And they're kind of going on about how everything nowadays is just so sexually perverse. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Like, this movie is that exactly. Like, it goes a lot further than I would have expected a movie like this to go. Especially a family film. But I thought it was hilarious. Like, I was laughing quite a bit throughout this one. While you're here, would you mind vacuuming my lap? Nina needs a clean place to sit. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about this. Like the uh, the effects, the elf effects, I think are better than ever. They look awesome. Uh, you get full body elf in this walking around. He's hilarious throughout this. His lines are just really well done. And I loved the effects in this. I thought it looked awesome throughout the entire thing. It was never not believable. And so that was really cool. Like it's just an enjoyable film. And I didn't really expect that coming in. I had a lot more fun with it than I really thought I would. And so I like this one quite a lot. Now, if you are someone who loved it, you know, back in the day, if you're wondering if it holds up, frankly, I think it holds up pretty well for what it is. Now, comedy is extremely divisive, as I always say, but I was laughing. So, you know, I can only give you my experience and I had a really good time with this. So I am going to give Project Elf from 1996, three and a half out of five stars. All right, so let's now talk about the Blu-ray itself, and that's where things might get a little difficult for some. So on the audio side of things, there is a 2.0 stereo track, and it was totally fine. At points, it almost sounded like there was a bit of an echo on my sound system. I don't know if that was just my system or what was going on there, but I did notice it a very little bit. Nothing that took me out of the film at all, just something, again, it was my experience, so I thought I would share that with you. Aside from that very small noticeable echo maybe every once in a while i really had no issues with the sound on this i thought it sounded pretty darn good overall there's not a whole lot that it's tasked with to do given the type of movie this is and it does it exactly well like it does exactly what it's supposed to do so even though there's only that one 2.0 stereo option i thought it does the job just fine But let's talk about the elephant in the room here with the video side of this disc. I will start with the aspect ratio. So as I mentioned in the uh, intro to this, this is a made-for-TV movie from 1996. Therefore, the original aspect ratio is 1.33 to 1. That means it is in full screen. So if we are watching it on our modern televisions, we will see an image in the middle of the screen with black bars on the left and the right-hand side. That is how it was originally intended. That's how it was filmed. But this Blu-ray release has done a 16.9 widescreen as it boasts on the back of the box, and it is a 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio according to what I've seen online. Now, 
I have talked about original aspect ratio so much on this channel that this next statement is going to sound extremely hypocritical. When you watch this Blu-ray versus what I was able to find on YouTube for like the full movie, there is a difference. It is zoomed in in order to fill your entire 4K TV or 1080p TV. But you are losing almost nothing in this. And I know that sounds so hypocritical because I am such an advocate for the original aspect ratio. But in this case, it really doesn't make much of a difference. So again, I know that people are not going to agree with that. There's going to be some that hate that. But watching this in 1.78 to 1 versus 1.33 to 1 did not take away from my experience of this movie at all. There are times where you can see the heads of the characters. It's like up here, right? It's above the frame just a little bit. Just the very tops of their head is on the very top of the frame. And that does look a little bit goofy, but honestly, it doesn't really affect too much. It is not like taking a movie where there is a bunch of data on the left and the right side of the screen and then shrinking that down to full screen where you just lose that this you are losing the top and the bottom a bit but there's not too much going on there anyway so it doesn't really make that much of a difference at least it didn't to me so i understand i'm a hypocrite but I didn't mind this being in the 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio. And I think the big reason for that is because of how good this release looks. I was not able to find how this remastering was done. So I have no idea if they did like a 2K scan of the original film negatives, a 4K scan. I have no idea because I just simply wasn't able to find that. But it looks awesome. When you compare this to the YouTube version of it, and it's also on Tubi. And so if you want to watch it there, you could also do that for free. But, uh, you know, it's going to be the original aspect ratio and it's going to be that older transfer, which boy, it is night and day difference from that transfer to this Blu-ray. I think Liberation Hall did an excellent job on the transfer on this. I do wish they stuck with the original aspect ratio. And frankly, there's no excuse not to. I have no idea why they continue to make the choice to go with a widescreen aspect ratio when it is not the original aspect. It just doesn't make sense to me. People buying releases from Liberation Hall are going to be more people like you and I who care about stupid little things like that. So I don't know why that choice is made. Why go with widescreen over full screen? The, the thought process might be that it makes it more accessible because it fits your widescreen TVs, but I don't, these aren't going to be on the shelves at Best Buy and, and Target, you know? And so aiming at that wide audience just seems silly to me because that wide mainstream audience is not who's purchasing these Blu-rays anyway. So I keep that in mind. Yes, I enjoyed this presentation. I think the Blu-ray looks fantastic. There's like a, a great amount of film grain. It's not too much. It's not, they, they didn't DNR it or, you know, take away digital noise reduction on top of it to make it look glossy. It just looks really good. I just wish it was in the original aspect ratio just to say that it was to give it its highest marks. So I have no idea why they chose to do it in this aspect ratio, but it is what it is. I'll, I'll leave it there because I just keep saying the same things over and over again. But if you are someone who absolutely will not watch a movie outside of its OAR, you're not going to want this Blu-ray. But if you don't really mind too much and you really want just to own Project Elf in the best looking uh, format possible, then this Blu-ray transfer, I think, looks really good. So it is just such a like dichotomy. It's just such a difficult thing to talk about. It should be in its original aspect ratio. It's not. And it is what it is. It's still, in for my money, I think it still looks really darn good for what they did with this. All right, now that I've said the words original aspect ratio probably 700 times in this video, let's jump over to the special features on this. So the only real notable special feature is that there is a commentary track with the creator, Paul Fusco. So he is who created ALF as a whole, and I believe he actually plays ALF also. And so the commentary track itself, like it's cool that they got him on there and they have one special feature, but honestly, it's a very... It's not a very lively discussion between the two. And so that was a little bit disappointing. There is a ton of dead air and it's just not very high energy. So 
not my favorite commentary track I've ever listened to. They also, they don't go into a ton of like the behind the scenes of it, which is re- what I really look for in a commentary track. I mean, at points, they're just watching the movie and laughing about it together, uh, which is fine, but it's not exactly what I want out of a commentary track. So just keep that in mind. Wasn't, wasn't my favorite, but hey, at least they have something. There's also a photo gallery. It's about three minutes. It's literally just photos playing for three minutes. And then there are some like facts about some of the people people involved in the movie it's a it's a bunch of texts so i mean it is what it is if you're into that great i'm not sure who really this is going to appeal to, appeal to though because most of this you can just find on online anyway but hey it is what it is so not a whole lot on the special feature side of things but given the price i don't really mind that too much all right, so let me wrap up my thoughts on this Liberation Hall release of Project Alf. Yes, it is not perfect, but for the price I paid, this was $14.99 when it came out. I just looked today and it was like $15.89 on Amazon. This is not an expensive release. So the fact that you don't have a ton of special features doesn't really bother me too much. This is a really fun movie. Like I was shocked how, how much of a good time I had with this because I really wasn't even expecting to like it that much. I thought it was going to be one of those where it's like, yeah... Maybe if I watched this in the 90s, I would have liked it. But today, eh, not so much. But no, really, I think it holds up. It's funny. Uh, I think Alf looks awesome in this. And the Blu-ray transfer itself, the work done on the cleanup, excellent. I think they did a fantastic job with this. The big issue with this, and really... For, for my money, the only issue is the fact that they chose to go with a widescreen aspect ratio versus the original. I don't know why that choice is made. I, I, I don't agree with the choice, but again, I'm not behind the scenes. So who am I to judge why they made the choice? I just wish they would have stuck with the original because there seems to be no reason not to. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe there is a very good reason, but I just can't see what that might be. But again, it doesn't ruin this movie at all. You lose virtually nothing of value when they with this move from 1.33 to 1.78. That's my opinion anyway. But so because of that, I still think this is a worthwhile release. So I am going to give the Liberation Hall Blu-ray of Project Elf three and a half out of five stars. All right, so now that I've rambled on and said the words OAR more times than any human should in a single year, we can move on and wrap this guy up. But let me know down in the comments below, knowing that this does use a different aspect ratio, is it something you'd even consider? Or is that just a complete deal breaker for you? I know with the RoboCop series, it seemed to make quite a bit of difference because RoboCop's head was chopped off quite a bit throughout some of the screenshots I've seen of that, which is why I never picked that one up for myself because I just didn't want it to look like that. So let me know what your thoughts are. Again, I think the transfer is worth the upgrade, but that aspect ratio can be a deal killer for some people. So let me know what your thoughts are on this and anything else down in the comments below. I appreciate any and all support down there. So thank you so much for that. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this one, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. And like I always say, I don't just talk movies. I talk all things media, books, movies, video games, graphic novels, manga. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching and I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time.